is Steve Edwards. Steve, how's it going? Hey, by golly, I'm doing good now that I am on USA soil, and especially here at the ranch. Now we're talking. That's what I'm talking about. Fantastic. Yeah, you are on USA soil. Why don't you tell folks why that is a big deal here? I almost, because of this here uh, uh, virus, yeah. this 19 virus, I almost got stuck in Australia for about another month. Uh, it wouldn't have been so bad. They had a lot of nice mules there, and I could have been training on mules and on one or two ranches, you know. So, but anyway, we're going to see some pictures of that, not only on my website and Facebook, which I've sent some stuff, but we'll do some more stuff today, too. Yeah, we got some pictures here to, to show today. Now, before we get too far in, folks, if this is your first time hanging out with us, and I know there's quite a bit of you who this is the first time you're ever watching uh, Steve Edwards live on Facebook, live on YouTube. We just want to say welcome. Who are we? What do we do? Well, uh, Steve Edwards has been working with, uh, has been a cowboy his whole life and has been working with mules ever since around 1981 or so. So we are digging deep into the well, doing everything we can on this show to answer as many mule and donkey questions as you have. And as the people can tell you, who have watched us over the past 50 episodes or so, I don't know how many we've done, they can tell you what we do here helps folks get results. Now, there's really three things that we ask during this time, and anybody who's been watching for any period of time, seeing our past shows, they can tell you what they are. The first thing is we want to know that you are here watching and hanging out with us. So put your name in the comment section. Put your name, where you're watching from, and tell us what the weather is like. Uh, we could be here. Steve and I talk all the time. And we could just talk back and forth to each other anytime we want to. But that's not why we're doing this, just for me and Steve to hear our own voices back and forth. I love hearing his voice, and I'm sure he loves hearing mine. But we are here to interact and engage and hang out all together as a mule, equine, donkey community. So we want to hear from you. So put your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like there in your neck of the woods. I'm hoping that everybody is safe. I'm hoping that everybody is healthy. And I know that there's probably some folks here or there that it's a little bit of a tough time. And I hope that this show can bring just a little bit of joy to your life here in the midst of everything that's going on. So name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like there is the first thing. The second thing, we ask if you have any questions at all, go ahead and ask them. Put them in the comment section. I'll be watching the entire time to make sure we get to answer every single question possible. And a few question topics that we have for today is talking about the bars and the angles. How, you know, when, when Steve's showing us the bars, he's got those red bars and then he puts the the saddle on the back and you know how, how what's the difference there so asking about that uh, wanting to keep riding but there's a mule that just has trust issues talking a little bit about feed talking about how to get leather to match because steve folks want to make sure that the looks are there function is first importance but they want the looks too so how do we get the looks uh picking up the rear foot the getting the rear cinch to work, Crooper versus Britchin, um, talking about wow. animals that have been rescued from the kill pen, and uh, what bit do we want to use for a working team. So that's some of what we're going to be discussing today, but we want to discuss what you want to discuss too. So put that in the comment section. And the third thing, and then I'll shut up, the third thing is we want you to tag or share the broadcast with friends, families, equine colleagues, folks who are looking to, to really get the most enjoyment out of these animals, folks who are looking to provide the best life as possible for these animals, folks who really want to enjoy these animals the way God gave them to us. He gave us everything to have dominion over it, and we sure do enjoy getting to lead and care for these animals and all livestock, but mules and donkeys specifically. So share the broadcast. Steve, what do you say we get to greeting some of the folks who are here watching uh, new friends and old friends? What do you say? Yeah, let's see what let's see who's out there. All right. So David Scholl just hopped on. Hey. David and Di just hopped on. Hey. Yeah. Good to see you guys. We'll be talking about Steve's trip to Australia here uh, uh, soon. Faye Brown says, hello. Glad to meet Steve in Australia. Great show at Maryborough. Uh, Alexis says, Alexis, <coughs> excuse me. 
excuse me, Alexis from Rifle, Colorado, and it's mostly sunny with a cool breeze. That sounds good. I'll take that all day long. Uh, Tracy, let's see, uh, Tracy Mulio says, good night, mates from Queensland, Australia. Beautiful day here. Welcome back. Have missed you so much. I don't know if I did all right there. Hopefully I was okay. You, you, sounded, you made me feel at home there. All right. Yeah. Hey, uh, Tracy, it's good to have you here. Linda and uh, watching. Linda here from sunny and breezy California. Sequestered. Me too. Linda, this right here is my sequester. I am in my living I or my living room, my bedroom. And I've got a little wall set up there. I've got a makeshift office sequestered here in Arizona. So it takes one to know one. We're all in good company here. Uh, David Scholl says, good eye, buddies. Delanao, Australia, sunny and beautiful. All right there. Cindy from Bakersfield, Bakersfield, California. Mary Musselman. Hey, Steve, glad you're back. Gloomy and 50 here in Michigan. Well, hopefully we can bring a little bit of sunshine to the gloomy day. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, Dai says, where's your hat, Dave? I may have to go grab it. I don't have my hat here. I may have to go grab it. Uh, Deborah Dye says, Walla Walla, Washington. Weather is in the 40s. One hour rainy, one hour sunny, sunny, and hail and wind. Then nice again. Sounds like a little bit of a schizophrenic weather. Hopefully this will bring some consistent smiles and sunshine for the next there hour. Go. Jack watching from Johannesburg, Michigan. Checking in. Still have snow in my yard, but it's starting to warm up. Alexis is watching. I've been trying to get my donkeys to run with me. She's got a question here. We'll get to it in a second, Alexis. Good to have you here. Cindy, I love your tack. So comfy, and my mules love it. Everything fit to a T. Steve, there's not a whole lot more that we like hearing than that, is there? That's a good one. That's That's a a real good one. So that's over on Facebook. We got folks over on YouTube. Linda's watching on YouTube. Ready for the Steve and Dave show. Here we go. Welcome home, Steve. Be sure to tell those killer cattle out there in Oz. Uh, Steve Sparks, hello, y'all. Love the t-shirt, Steve. Steve's going to talk about that here in a second. Linda Osborne, uh, or Lisa Osborne from Tennessee watching. Steve is uh, Steve Sparks is from Burns, Oregon. Uh, Steve Below, Sandy, Tennessee, beautiful 60s. Haley is watching. Haley Williams. Hey, Steve, this is Haley and Mark Williams here in Virginia. It's about 43 degrees out here. Sounds nice and cool. Linda says the mule servant and Theo, uh, the Linda the mule servant and Theo the sweet one-eyed mule in rural central Ohio, gray and chilly here. Misty man, hi Steve, you are my new favorite dude. Misty man from Signal uh, Mountain, Tennessee. Weather is finally pretty. 50s today. The come along has changed my world. Yep, we hear that from time to time, day to day. Even sometimes hour to hour, folks talk about how that come along hitch makes a big difference. Gary Green, yeah. Gary Green's watching. Steve, Gary, Tularosa, New Mexico, eighty degrees and pleasant. Now, Steve, before we get into the questions, we had a comment about your shirt. Why don't you tell us about your shirt real quick? What do we got going on here? It's just one of my hot rod shirts, you know, about pickup trucks, hot rods, and a lot of the t-shirts that I wear. Which I don't wear T-shirts a lot, uh, but uh, when I'm the ten I wear them, I wear hot rod stuff, you know. But I've also got right here, da da da. You know how my heart's with the fire service. You see that? Oh yes. I got in Marysboro, Queensland, and that's the fire service now. I collect shirts uh, when I go to places. This is my shirt uh, from the fire department here in uh, in Queen Valley, and you can see everything there, right there. And uh, when I go out on uh, uh, on a fire call or a medical call or something like that, I wear that shirt. And of course, it depends on what I'm going to do. But see, uh, my wife is taking these shirts, and she is going to make me up. Uh, blank uh, with all the different fire service uh, that's awesome t-shirts yeah she's one from my son it's really nice because he's done all this stuff in the fire service being a captain and a grunt and all that stuff. she done one for him but anyway yep this is part of my hot rod deal you know I don't have any meals to play Dave, and I know that blows people away yeah since I don't have any meals on the place I got a quarter coffee which he'll buy later on today and so I got a 49 rod, uh, and my 60 Falcon, which is another story. I, I tell you, while I was in Australia, 
spending time with Dave and Di, and sitting out on the patio, looking out over top of Australia, you wouldn't, you would swim down to San Diego, green flowing hills, you know, the only difference was there was cows in them hills, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of people. Very you know. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you know what? I was glad you all were able to get out there. Of course, uh, just under a year ago, uh, David and I came out here. We spent some time yeah. down in Tucson, um, just south of Tucson at the Andrada Ranch, and it was a lot of fun getting to show them our our place, and I know it was great for them to get to be able to share with you and show you around their place. So very cool. We'll show some pictures from the Australia trip a little bit later on in the show, so be sure to hang out. Um, yeah. Steve, what do you say we get to some questions? Let me, I've got my cowboy hat on from Australia. Uh, they, I gave me this they did. last year, so I'm, I'm official. I'm ready to go. We're ready to go. Okay, well, let's start with Alexis. We give priority to the questions that come in real time. And so we are going to start with Alexis. Alexis, we're so glad you're here. Thanks for hanging out with us and spend a little bit of time. Alexis says, I've been trying to get my donkey to run with me. They do well with the leading, but won't do more than walk when I try to get them to run. I just end up trying to drag them, which doesesn't work well. I'm worried that our first burrow weight race will either end with me being dragged or walking the whole way. Neither of those is a preferred outcome. Steve, what would you say to Alexis to help get her ready for this first burrow race? Come along, Hitch, come along, Hitch, come along, Hitch. Now, look, when you want one to pick up the speed, you don't necessarily go straight off. You go off, you go off to a right angle and go off at a trot or a left angle and go off to a trot and, uh, and use the come along hitch, and that really works well. Now, you can also use uh, right at the point of the croup. That's really the important part. So you got the back, and then you got the rump right here. And so right here in this area, the point of the croup, you can tap right in there. So the halter moves the, the shoulders from the middle of the body forward. And then tapping at the point of the croup moves the, uh, the other half between the middle of the ribs and the hind quarters. So it takes two people to really do it right, uh, but you can also... Uh, just do it with one person and kind of walk along sideways and you take him and pull with the lead rope, come along hitch and then point of the croup. So, but the number one thing is they've got to understand that they, they can't pull back on that come along rope and you racers out there, you need to, uh, you need to, to use that come along rope even during the race. I know some of you got your donkeys that fly ahead of you. Uh, I understand that, but there, there. I know of a few people that kind of had a couple blow-ups. So anyway, that, hopefully that helps. Yeah, very good. I put a link to, uh, I'll tell you what, Steve, there have been more comments about the come-along rope, the yeah. rope halter, and the kit that you put together so folks could get the essential foundation kits. You called it the ground foundation starting kit. We have gotten mm -hmm. so many comments from folks just yeah. saying, hey, these these two communication pieces and the training on that video is just out of this world. It just completely transforms the animal. Um, I know when we do clinics at the ranch, these animals that get that come along rope on them for the very first time, the owners are just shocked. They say, wow, I, I never thought I'd be able to get them to do that. And within five minutes, you've got them doing the things that they need. And the coolest part about that is it's not you. It's the come along rope and it's the communication of whoever's leading them, which means anybody can do it, right? Anybody can right, train. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I was just talking to a doctor today and uh, he was watching my videos. <laughs> I said, Don't you have people to work with? He says, Yeah, but I'm watching your videos right now and kind of relaxing some. But he said, What do I do, Steve? I just got bucked off of my meal. Where do I start? Do I climb back on? I said, No. Don't climb back on. You put the come along hitch on there, do your ground foundation, and do groundwork. You know, put your saddle on there. Of course, he was riding a saddle that didn't have a breeching, that didn't have a rear cinch, that didn't have a breast collar. And he says, Steve, I see so many people online doing that. I said, those are horse people trying to get into the mule world. And you'll know a horse person, there's no breeching, there's no rear cinch on it, and they use a tail crouper. You know, 
And uh, if you really want to make your animal comfortable, by golly, it, it's important they have a breaching because that tail could put underneath your tail. I'd like to have some of you run a rope up your hind end and see how you like it. Uh-uh. Nope. No, no good. Yep. Yeah. Um, another thing that I've heard you say, uh, and, and what, what I, I, I've, I've heard you say it this way, like they're well-meaning folks. Uh, it's not folks mm-hmm. out there trying to, they're trying to help. And so there, there a lot of horse horsemen will want to try to help the mule and the donkey. Some people, they just talk and some people genuinely want to help. But one of the mm-hmm. things that you can tell is a horse person, whatever their intentions are, a lot of times, even with the rope halter, you'll see the rope halter way up here rather than down, what, three fingers above the nostrils? Two, two fingers two, above. Two yeah. fingers above the nostrils. And so you lis- you're you listening to someone and they've got the rope halter up here giving instruction about the mule or the donkey. There's a good chance that they don't understand the nuances and the differences that so many of the people who are watching our broadcast today have discovered. We get so many people saying, I am, like verbatim, I am learning that mules and donkeys are different than horses, and they absolutely are. So, yeah, um, that's right. Hopefully, that helps you there, Alexis. Uh, do follow up with us if you've got any follow up questions. You you get the come along rope. You get out there and work, and you're finding you're having some troubles. Follow up with us. Send Steve a message. You can call him. Information's on the website, muleranch.com. We want to help you. We want to make sure that you get ready for your race. That's going to be so much fun. And send us pictures of that, too. We'd love to see it. Um, We've got Cindy Calloway uh, watching. Hello, Cindy. Uh, We've got Faye Brown asking a question. Steve, met my pocket rocket mini. Steve met my pocket rocket mini mule at the show in Australia. How do I slow him down, please? This is Faye Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, Faye, you bet your pocket rocket. Well, the the best thing now, are we talking about slowing down uh, because you're riding him or you're driving him or walking alongside of him? So that's kind of important. So, for instance, if I'm walking alongside of them and they're moving ahead of me, I'm going to bump my, my come-along rope. Bump, bump, bump. Always remember, a bump gets you more than a steady pull. Steady pull, they're going to brace against you. So bump, bump, bump. If you're in the bridle, whether you're in the harness or whether you're you're uh, riding, you're always going to take your hands and go right, left, right, left. You're going to ask, right, left, right, left, tail, right, left, right, left, demand, right, left, right, left, right, left really, really fast. Because when you pick up on one rein, they're going to run right through their shoulder. So you pick up on the right rein, they're going to run through the left shoulder. So hopefully that will help you. Uh, figure out what to do about slowing them down. And also, if you're going to be bidding uh, on your mules, remember, you smooth snap a bit. They have they have no care at all about that bit. You know, they don't respect it. And so if you get a smooth snap a bit and you go to pulling on it really hard, you've got a chance of cutting a tongue. And I think that you've seen a couple of cut tongues a couple of my videos, a couple of my clinics, you know. Where people are well mean, yeah, and they use a smooth snaffle a bit, and they cut the tongue in almost in two. You know, one of the it's thing, horrible. Yeah, one of the things that'll happen. Um, this is one of my biggest takeaways. I am not a, a a a cowboy. I'm not a natural mule donkey man. Everything that I've learned is from listening to Steve, and even just hearing it is different than getting out there and doing it. So the more you get out there and do it, you can have everything up here, but you got to get out there and apply it. Well. One of the things that um, that has been the biggest eye opener for me, um, quite frankly, as just a person, is that we will project on the mule and the donkey what we think something looks like if it's going to be painful, or what we think it's going to be communication, or if we think that it's going to be helpful. For instance, all the petting and the sweet talking and you know high pitch voice and everything like that with dogs, a lot of times that works. But with the mule, it doesn't mean anything to the mule. It, it's comforting to us, but it really doesn't mean a whole lot to the mule. That was a big eye-opener uh, when it comes to communicating to the nose. We look at it and we think, oh, you know, you, you, we got a tug on it. Well, no, the nose is ultra-sensitive. you got all sorts of nerves up in here. All it is is just light touches. And you start with asking, then telling, and then demanding if you have to. But we think, no, you just got to pull because that's how you do it with other animals. No, they're different. Well, a third thing is when we talk about the bits, people look at the double twisted wire snaffle bit and they think, oh, that's harsh. Oh, that's, 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 you know, that's brutal. But then you take that, uh, that um, smooth snaffle bit and Steve, you do this 
inside of the clinic and you put it on the people on people's fingers and you say now tell me how does this feel and you 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 manipulate it so that it goes like it would be in the mule's mouth they're like ow that hurts yeah of course it hurts then you take the double twisted wire snaffle bit and you put the fingers out there and you say see do you see now how it's communicating wow it looks like it would hurt so much more but it doesn't talk a little bit about that how we think one thing but it's completely different for the mule well, exactly. You know, when you when you're communicating, you do it with a less a stress than they're with your animals. You know, and so when you got a snaffle, smooth snaffle bit, it basically breaks like this. It goes into the tongue and holds the tongue in place. And so when that happens, well, now you got a pressure point just on the one place of the tongue. But the twist fire snaffle, bit, it goes on both sides of the tongue and kind of holds it like this so that these two points are what's on there and when i put people's fingers you could just see the look on their face like i expected it to hurt no it was more comfortable than it was with the smooth snap bit i also took uh during my clinic in australia you know how i like to demonstrate having somebody look forward yep and i i ran and i roll my hand like this yeah and i tell people i built and people can see that I barely touch my hands. I barely use them to get the communication I need to do. That's what's important, folks. You know, you want to, you want your donkey, you want your mule to be comfortable. You want them to be comfortable, but you can't do it when you're pulling on them all the time. It, you know, now there's a time, yes, when that donkey's pulling back on you or that mule's busting back. Yeah, you've got to be a little more harsher than normal. Yeah. But you really, when you know, once you get them going, you just barely have to touch uh, the, the the communication tool that you're using the the rope halter or the or the bridle. You know, you allow it to work. You don't make it work. Exactly, allow it to work. You know, and we, unfortunately, we tend to always make it work. Yeah. You know, we get we've got our hands here and we do this. You know, and pull them around when really. All you need to do is just do this. Yep. That's it. Yep. It's that simple. Well, let's keep telling people how to do that in all sorts, different ways and shapes. We got Lisa Jones watching. Says, checking in from Eastern Oregon. Glad to have you here, Lisa. We've got Dan Davis, San Augustine, Texas, sunny in low 70s. We've got Karen Whitehead. Karen from Sunny Raymond, California. It's good to have you back, Karen. Cindy Calloway says, 39 Ford and a 64 convertible Thunderbird F450 crew dually. Gotta love them Fords too. Sounds like quite a collection. <laughs> Good for her. Uh, yeah. Let's see here. Jennifer, oh, just bounced around there. Uh, Jennifer says, Chili Horseshoe Bend, Indiana. It's good to have Horseshoe Bend, Indiana, Idaho. ID, is ID Idaho or Indiana? Idaho. Yeah. Yeah. Idaho. There Idaho. we go. Uh, okay, uh, Jack. Uh, has a question. I got a new Australian Shepherd for a riding companion, three months old. What commands do I need to train and master with this pup before taking her on a ride? I'm guessing she will be ready for a trail ride late summer, early fall. Steve, what do you have to say? Of course, you got Jess, your border collie. Yep. Jess gets out there yeah. and, and and works the works the sheep, and and you've been working hard. What would you say to Jack? Yeah, he works the sheep here, and then when we go down, we work the cattle, of course. But number one thing I like to have on a dog is a down. That's really important. When I say there, he hesitates down. He immediately goes down. Now, here's the thing, folks, with mules and donkeys. I'm sure some of you have experienced it already. These mule and donkeys will attack a dog. And that's one of the reasons, Dave, that I tell people, keep your little children away from these animals. You know, I've seen, I've seen pictures, and I know it's cute, and I know it's great, but I can also tell you some horror stories where a front smack and get them a lot of damage. So they're a predator, folks, small, but keep that in mind. So down on your puppy, absolutely the most important thing. Uh, get a down on them. And when you get your down, you get your ear to you. And of course, I do all that when I start with about 25 foot of inch cord. Uh, when I do all of my work with them, and way I can I have a good communication. Jeff, you uh, you'll see, you know, I'm telling away 
high there and down and walk up get a bite you know this sort of thing and and but a down is the most important part very good uh let's see here ben talbert watching says first time i've been able to catch you live here in marshville north carolina ben it's good to have you thanks for hanging out with us thanks for watching the replays too and that's something that y'all should know um all of these live streams if you miss one you can go to youtube the, all the replays are there as a matter of fact over 50 hours of broadcasts are there right now on youtube ready for you to watch we've answered i don't know how many hundreds of questions and the great part is we answer multiple questions multiple times meaning you get the reinforcement and that's really what we're looking for here in a lot of what we do is we want the reinforcement you hear it once you apply you hear it a second time you, you, you figure something new out that second time you heard it and maybe you can apply it a little bit more effectively which very quickly, I just want to welcome all of the new people who are watching right now. My name's Dave. This is Steve Edwards. We come to you answering mule and donkey questions on Wednesday. Steve's out here at Queen Valley Mule Ranch in Queen Valley, Arizona. Been working with mules and donkeys since 1981. And these broadcasts are all about answering your mule and donkey questions. So if this is your first time watching, announce yourself. And if you're a longtime watcher and just tuning in, announce yourself. Share your name where you're watching from and what the weather's like in the comments section. Second, ask your questions in the comments section. No question's dumb. No question is, uh, is have we answered too many times? We want to answer them over and over again. Third thing, make sure you tell all your friends about the broadcast. Uh, we've got uh, Orin here watching from Wickenburg. We've got Bryant watching from Eloy, Arizona, mid-80s. Uh, let's see. David Pengelly says, so wonderful to have you guys back. David, it's good to be back. Thank you for being here and greeting us. We've got uh, Ricky and Lisa watching from Mississippi. Susan says, it's good to see you guys again. Costa Rica here, which reminds me, we've got Australia. We've got Costa Rica. We have gone international. Woo! Well, don't we have some sound effects for that stuff? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a bite. Let's. There we go, DJ horn. We'll do a DJ horn, and then if we've got any new mule owners, we've got a glockenspiel. There we go, new mule owners. First time owner, we'll play the glockenspiel there. Uh, we've got Sherry Lewis from Pensacola, Florida. We've got Penny from Bakersfield, California. We've got James from Holden, Missouri, over on YouTube. Uh, let's see here. We've got a question from Misty. <coughs> Almost two-year-old Belgian mule using come along doing lots of groundwork she lets me get her uh get on her and we'll walk i'm green on tack i'm a believer in all your stuff please tell me what bridle and saddle i should start with did i say you are my favorite new dude steve you've got a big fan here in misty man steve let's make her happy let's tell her what she needs in terms of tack and saddle well you know anytime i'm starting something new or if i'm fixing a problem uh, I always use my mule rider's martingale. Comes complete with a bridle and bit, reins. And what I do, Dave, and what you know, what I like to see do done so that I can help people is I've got a how-to video with that martingale. So you don't have to guess how it's going to work. You can actually see a mule without a rider going around in a circle, and you can see that that mule straightening himself up without a rider on him. And that's if that's any proof as to how the bit works and how to do it without making it work, that's you'll see it in that video. Uh, and then of course, you know, uh, she's young enough; she could ride a she can ride any of the saddles. But uh, my my lighter saddles, my trail light, is a is a great. Model. And we got the up and coming the ultra light, which is all leather. Uh, David Penn Galley has one. And uh, he's been using it now for, I don't know, about three months now, Dave. Uh, by the way, Dave is an entertainer, or, and uh, he's on his cruise ships all the time. Yeah. So he, he must have got off with cruise ships just in time. I, yeah. It's always I heard good a to have him here, isn't it? Absolutely. I heard, I heard a funny thing yesterday uh, today from one of my clients. He has a friend of hers that's a comedian. And she, he says to her, he says to uh, to people, why are you getting on those floating toilets? He says, you think about it. The water's up on top where the swimming pool is, you know, and, and then you got all the garbage down below. <laughs> you know, 
Uh, I won't go into any more detail, <laughs> but he, he called them he, he called them floating toilets, you know. So I've been on a couple cruises and I've enjoyed them and stuff like that. But I tell you what, it's going to be hard for me to think about going on a cruise after this, you know. Yeah, it's tough times. It is tough times. And uh, one of the things that's very cool is uh, we get to see, of course, more often than not now, we get to see the best of humanity. We get to see the best people have to offer. Uh, We get to see the best that our public servants have. And I'm not talking politicians. I am talking the people who protect and serve. Uh, Doctors have really come on. Uh, full strength here and they are right in there uh, with military they are right in there with the local fire uh, fire and um, and police Uh, these doctors and these nurses and health professionals they are really the front lines right now and so uh, we do uh, have a big big heart for all of the people who are going out of their way to do everything they can and uh, and I'm here sequestered in my house doing my part just trying to to lead by example Steve Steve and Susan just got back from Australia. They're sequestered on the ranch, and uh, yeah, we're doing our you. part. You were talking about the sequestered on the ranch. Yeah, yeah. Can you see that out there? Yeah, it's a little bit different than request sequestered out here in the suburbs, isn't it? That's right. You know, we got all that beautiful desert out there and stuff. And, of course, if we go over this way here, we can see the rest of my living room and stuff, and it goes on for there. So, yeah, I'm sequestered, but I'm also about um, – 30 miles from town yeah it's kind of nice and we pretty much got uh we pretty much got enough freezer room but we're in good shape for the shape we're in you know shape uh let's see here uh we've got sherry watching from pensacola penny from bakersfield james from holden we've got leslie k jones here from north carolina leslie it's good to have you here randy is watching from the andrada ranch good to see you randy hey randy (laughs) Good for him. Uh, yeah. Steve, Eileen from Nebraska. She's tuning in. It's good to have you here, Eileen. Thanks for coming and hanging out with us. Uh, let's yeah. see here. Linda over on YouTube has a question. She says, you always say 80% seat and legs. Please explain to someone who is a total dummy about correct seat and leg aids for mule. I learned to write English, so I always write, feel like I have no communication at all in a big old mule saddle. What would you say here for Linda? Well, if she rides English, then she should definitely understand legs. So let's look at it this way. Here are three spots on the side of the mule. When my my riding leg is right here, when I take that leg and I push in that spot, that is side pass. When I move my leg forward to this spot, that is turn on the hindquarters. So the hindquarters are going to stay in place front end's going to go around. When I take and move my leg to this spot, that moves the hindquarters over, so that's turn on the forehand. So the front end stays in place and the back end goes around. So what I do is I ask, I tail, and I demand. So I ask with my calf, tail with the side of my stirrup, I demand with my spur. Now pretty soon, folks, you'll get to work. you hardly ever use spurs, but I'm going to tell you this. Spurs stay on my boots. I don't ride with unless I got spurs, no matter what, because they can tell you one day I really don't want to cross that creek or I really don't want to do ABC. Well, the spur backs up your ask, tail, demand. Very good. And of course, ask, tell, demand. That is the uh, that is the the herd leadership communication right there. At first, we ask the animal to do what we're asking them to do apply a little bit of pressure. If they don't listen, we tell them. We apply more pressure and get a little bit more uh, uh, stronger in our communication. And then finally, if they still don't want to listen, then we demand. And Steve, when we demand, we really go at them because we want them to know you're going to do what I say. Because if you're on the side of the Grand Canyon and that mule, that donkey isn't going to listen, hey, it's it's a deal breaker right there. You want them to respect the halter. You want them to respect the communication as you and you as the herd leader. Now, the great part about it is the communication that you get with the come along rope and with the rope halter really does the majority of the work to where, yeah, sometimes you have to go to the demand stage, but they get it really quickly. And then you've got a mule that's ready to listen and ready to follow you. Uh, Let's see here. Misty said, thank you for your your, uh, reply there about uh, saddle and tack. Um, she says, 
You're in my favorites too, Dave. I love having great instructions from guys that love Jesus and give great info. That's that's us right here. Two guys who love Jesus and want to give great info. So we Linda, thank you so much, Misty. Appreciate that. Linda says thank you. Can you really can you explain really quick tight inside leg when turning? Okay. Now that's advanced. That's advanced. Normally you take same leg, same hand. Okay. So when you want to take and have them bend more, then you take your, your leg, your, your leg in the center, and you put pressure there uh, on your right side. And then on your left side, you move your leg to the, to the front uh, of the shoulder, you know, at the shoulder, the front end of it. You actually have about four inches. So you, you put your leg against there, that moves the shoulder over, your leg is in the center of the body, and, and, and the, so the mule bends around your leg and makes a sharper turn um, and doesn't throw out the hind quarters. That's one of the, of the downsides of someone who is trying to make a sharp turn, don't set the hind quarters. And a good way to practice that is this, back up a few steps, one, two, three, turn and go. And then that way they'll learn how to, to bend as well using your leg. But so basically it looks like this. The uh, on the on the off side, you're going to put your leg in the middle of the ribs. And on the near side, you're going to put your leg up by the shoulder. So you're just gonna you're only gonna move four inches. You're not gonna be clear up the shoulder. So up four inches. And that's that's advanced. That's when you really want one to turn tight and quick and go. Very good. Thank you for asking. Especially when Randy hollers. What's that? Yeah, especially when Randy especially when Randy hollers at me saying, Go get that cow. <laughs> Thank you for asking that question, Linda. Appreciate it. I got a question from Steve that I missed a little bit earlier, so my apologies, Steve Below. He says, My mule is just about two. His hind quarters are up higher. About when should I see him even out? It's also causing his stifles to stick as he grows fast. Do they outgrow this? So what are what are the what t telling me why this is a concern? What are stifles? And then go ahead and answer his question. Okay. So, so you know, here's, here's the thing: thing. We're, we're breeding a lot of quarter type horses. horses. So, so then, what happens is the hip, hip is higher than the uh, uh, than than the shoulder, you know, and, and so it makes the the, the saddle run, run downhill, and you're all doing, doing this trying to stay in place. place. The stifle is coming down the leg. Uh, well, let's see, I guess the best way to do it. So it's coming down the thigh. The stifle is about right there before it gets into the leg. And this is kind of pointed looking. And stifle can really easily it can slip on ice and stifle a horse. In other words, it kind of pulls the tendons and they give a five sort of once they stifled they're usually not a whole lot of good in them because they they'll fall too much in their hip when you're trying to go down a hill but um hey send me a picture i'll be happy to visit with you uh and we'll look at the pictures uh and and we can i can tell you more yeah steve if you want to send him a message uh send a message to steve edwards at 602-999-6853 you can do that um that Excuse me, that number is on the website, muleranch.com. But yeah, send them a text message. Let them know uh, exactly what you're looking for and send a picture. And Steve's great about getting back to it. Uh, David Pengelly says, the new saddle is fantastic. But get this, Steve. My wife has taken it. I loved it while it lasted. I'd recommend it to everyone. I have to beg to use it now, right there. That is a testimonial oh, for the man. ages. Well, you know, and, and the funny thing about this, it happens a lot in a husband and wife teams. She says, I don't want to ride. You know, I don't really feel like riding. Well, she started riding that saddle. She goes, oh, this is comfortable. So now Dave's paying the price. And But he got his wife to ride. So, you know, got his saddle. There we go. Mission accomplished. All right. We've got a question here. This one came in. Um, on uh, on email, Roger sent us an email. I thought this was a good one. He says, "Steve, I'm a little uh, I'm a little confused, which is not too hard for me to get." So good good joke there, Roger. I watch all your videos, and I noticed on your saddles 
that your videos with the red saddle bar conflict with the one that has the saddle tree. They appear to be two different designs and theories. Also, the amount of different views in the mule world is never, never ending. I will say, however, that your views make sense to me. So can you explain, you've got those red, the red, um, the, 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 the bars that you use for your saddle. Can you explain the bars, explain the horse bar, and explain your bars, and um, and maybe help Roger understand what he's looking at a little bit? Yeah, well, I, I think what Roger was is talking about is when you look at my actual bar, the red bar he's talking about, it's the same width. It's about four inches all the way across, and so it's the same width. And it curves up in the front. And then you look at the bar that's on my saddle and you see how it's shaped a little bit different. It's got a it's got kind of a shape to it. Well, it has to be shaped like that so that the fenders work really well on that tree. So that's the basic shape. It still has uh, in my trees, it still has the bar and it still curves up in the front. That's the most important part. So basically it runs flat and it curves up in the front. So because of that adjustable pack saddle, I was able to know how would be the average angles I could put on any mule and know that angle and put it on lots of mules and know that it fit. And that's what worked so well uh, with that pack saddle is I was able to figure out um, uh, what angles was best because, you know, yes, you get some that are, that are fat and some of them that are skinny, but still, being close to the spine, I can figure out the angle. So the biggest thing is he's probably looking at that orange bar is four inches all the way across to where the where the bar, the bar on the saddle, it starts out four inches, comes up to about two and a half inches, goes back to four again. And that's probably the general looking. But it's still got the shape when it fits on the mule's back. Very good. So we've got a great, great follow-up here from Michelle. Michelle's watching from Colorado. And uh, good to have you here, Michelle. She says, how do you know what saddle will fit? So how do you know what saddle will fit your mule, what saddle will fit your donkey? Good question. Yeah. Well, you got to mule and donkeys are, are have the same bone structure. So we use the spine and we use the way they walk. And, and we create the tree so that it goes to the spine and it fits uh, – uh, seven eighths of the uh, seven eighths of an inch on each side of the spine and has the angles so it's not a matter of just the saddle itself first of all the bars is what's important on the saddle all my saddles have the same identical tree the difference is the uh, the, the looks of them so you know I, the one thing that i do is the back of the saddle is curved the front of the saddle is curved and of course i've got a lot of videos out on that too that people can look at but it's where the placement too of the d-ring i found that placing my rear d-ring in just the right spot it'll be perfect for every single mule every single donkey so there again if you think about the hundreds of mules uh i've ridden over the years donkeys uh, i'd have to have hundreds of different saddles if i went by the theory that most people have and but i've got the one saddle the the uh the one bars the basic design of of no pressure on the hip no pressure on the scapula uh open in the back so that it doesn't rub on the spine and most of all how those d-rings are placed so you know yeah there's fox trucks there's um there's uh belgium and things like this but i i designed the skirting so that I would not interfere with any of those type of animals with their travel, with their with their walk. So mine is designed around bone structure. Mine is designed around how they walk. So we've got saddles are, are the things that folks want to talk about more than anything else. Saddles and riding. And yeah. we've really worked hard to answer as many questions as possible with free resources on the muleranch.com website. So there's two things that I want to point people's attention to. The first is in the comments section, anything that Steve references, we put a link in the comment section. So in the comment section, you're going to see a link to an article called Mule Saddles, Everything You Need to Know. And folks, it is everything you need to know. It goes into great detail covering just about any question that you would have 
about the mule saddle. Now, the other thing that I want to put your attention on is another link that I'm about to share, and it is the mule saddle training course. We've got 13 videos. They're all free. You sign up for this uh, training course, and it walks you through everything you need to know about the mule saddle visually. Steve and I went down to Andrada Ranch last year because folks have been asking so much about why a breeching, why not a crouper, why the breast collar this way, why not a pulling collar, why two cinches, where do those two cinches go, how do I measure for those two cinches, and all of these things are connected to the saddle. So we went down there and we recorded a 13 part series that you can get for free. It's called the Mule Saddle Training Course and I'm gonna put a link in the comment section so y'all can check it out. Steve, any other comments about the Mule Saddle and the sizing? Well, you know, just talking about that, uh, there at the Andrada Ranch, Randy has all sizes of mules. Oh, yeah. From a little 13-2 mule that I like to ride, that little bitty guy, uh, all the way up to about 16 and a half hands high. So he's got a variety, and you'll see all these different types of mules on this video series you're talking about, you know. Uh, Randy's a good mule man, and he knows mules very well. He's got some nice mules there, but we were able to use those and then show the different trees on them and show how the fit should be in this sort of thing. Now, I don't know. I, I don't, I'm probably not going to make everybody happy when it comes time. You know, I've, I've had times where I've showed people. They've seen it. They visually can see it. They can touch it. And they still think, no, nah, that's impossible. You know, but uh, you can't make everybody happy, partner. Yep, yep. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Steve has a... Uh Steve here has a follow-up question. My two-year-old is high in the rump and is causing this. Did we already answer? First-time mule owner, what should I expect yep. him to fix? Yep. yep, we answered that one. Okay, but he said, first-time mule owner, so there we go. Welcome to the mule community there, partner. Welcome to the mule community. You were going to add something, Steve? No, I, he was just talking about the high hip and the stifle. Very good. Well, uh, Karen Whitehead, yeah. thanks for watching, Karen. It's good to have you here. Says, on your taps... Are they wood stirrups inside, or can you get the stirrups with the foam pads knee savers? You want to talk real quick about that? I try to stay away from the foam pads because you want to get out of the stirrup quick. Uh, several years ago when I was teaching at Pierce College in L.A., one of my clients had those foam pads on there, and she got hung up because she couldn't get her foot out of the, the saddle, out of, out of the uh, stirrup quick enough. So I stay away from those, and, and for that reason, hanging up. Um, they call them knee savers. I, I disagree with that. I think if you take and, and uh, adjust your stirrups, wet those fenders, and adjust them, and then ride with them that way, uh, and then adjust your, your, your stirrups according to uh, your riding. I, I sometimes change my uh, stirrup length quite a bit just to be able to help my knees and my back and it also um, uh, it depends a lot too on the type of saddle uh, you take my trail light uh, that little trail light those fenders move really easy and the folks with knee and back problems love it and same thing with the ultra light uh, it's the the fenders are really easy to move around and so that means a lot but it also has a lot to do with your knees it has a lot to do the way you you've got your fenders adjusted one of the things that we've talked about, and I don't know if this is spinning too far away on uh, the answer there, but one of the things we've talked about is folks will often ask about used saddles. Can, can, can we, can we, uh, do we have used saddles? Well, number one, we don't, mostly because uh, when an owner buys a signature saddle, that owner, owner keeps that signature saddle. And occasionally you can find something on you, uh, eBay if you know they don't have a mule anymore. Uh, but the but another reason why um, used saddles is something that you want to be uh, cautioned about is because those fenders get uh, sized and adjusted to a particular rider, especially if they're yep. leather fenders, right? So you're going to adjust those fenders to suit your knees. And the second you get a used saddle from somebody else, you're going to have uh, you're going to be opening yourself up to some knee problems if you use those same fenders. So it's just something else to add on there as you're considering saddle, as you're considering what you want to do. Um, sometimes you you got to go used, and that's the best way you can afford it, and that's what happens. But it is something to consider, and something that you want to have all the information before you make your decision. That way you make an informed decision, and that way you can make the decision that truly is 
best for you. Susan wants to know, can we use your saddle on a horse? Nope. All right. Absolutely not. not. You know, you've you got, got two different backs. You've got two different bone structures, and that's the main thing. I've had, I had one cowboy in Utah. He was a, a, a trainer, and he called me up. He says, man, I've been, I love your saddle, and I've been riding my horses with it. And I said, no, 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 don't, don't do that. And I, he said, why? I said, because it bridges. You've got different points of contact plus the web reading plate done. And don't do that. He called me up about two months later. He's in the hospital with a broken collarbone because he got bucked off. And uh, he knew the horse had been kind of been kind of uh, a bother about things, but he kept thinking he'd just ride it through. Well, no, the pressure points in that saddle created that problem. You know? And then going back to the fenders and this sort of thing, we talked about buying a saddle. You know, my, my resale value on my saddles, Dave, doesn't go down that much. Yeah. It's usually about 80% yeah. of what they were originally. But, you know, it, it takes a lot to wet fenders and this sort of thing to make it work, even on a new saddle. But an older saddle that's been oiled, it takes a lot more work. And, folks, in time, you're done with your saddle for the day. This is really important. Put your saddle on the rack, turn your strips, and put a bolt on them so that you keep that shape. Leather is going to want to go to the flat uh, even area. So turn your surf, put a stick on them, and store them that way. Anytime you're not riding, store them that way, you'll be able to keep your shape a lot easier. Yep, very good tips and tricks from Steve Edwards right there. You're learning the way. Now we got a follow-up question here from Linda. This is a great question. Uh, I just love the transparency and the honesty here. She says, I get so intimidated with so much information sometimes. Is it okay to learn from you, then get up on the mule and do my best and pay attention to how the mule reacts? I don't want to be never ready. You, you, you were breaking up a little bit, so I she, part So she, she is wanting to know if it's okay to not have all the answers, take what she's heard, take what she's learned, do her best, and then come back for, for more information when she's ready. Absolutely. That's that's how I learned. You know, by, by making a mistake. Folks, you're going to make a mistake. It's going to happen. So, you know, as you learn, as you learn, you made a mistake. So, make that mistake. Okay, I made that mistake. This happened. So, how do I get out of it? Uh, one thing that John Lyons taught me said years ago, he said, Steve, why don't you become one of my trainers? And I said, I'm no trainer. He says, oh, yeah, you know how to fix your mistakes. You're a trainer, you know. So there you are. Uh, uh, you're going, yeah, just ride. You know, go go enjoy and ride. But if, make sure your ground foundation is right first. you got a good for ground foundation. It's good and solid. The meal hears your voice. The meal feels your touch. Uh, he sees you move. He gets to where he starts building a trust, and that trust is what you need to have. Very good. Uh, Michelle's here. She was the one who had asked the question on what size saddle. Um, was it? Uh, yeah. How do you know what saddle will fit? She says, "Wear bigger boots. You can save yourself." <laughs> there you go. Well, that's a thought. Yeah. Wear bigger that's boots. That's a thought. I got it. Uh, hey, guess what? Uh oh. We've gone international again. Uh -oh. Yolanda's here. Yolanda from Yolanda. the Netherlands. It's good to have you here, yes, Yolanda. I was wondering yeah. if she'd tune in. I was wondering. We was Dave and Di and I talked about her quite a bit when we was in Australia, you know. How fun. And uh, we kept thinking maybe uh, Yolanda would have given us a call while we were there, you know. She was. Uh, she says she was uh, just about to order a saddle. She had saved up the funds. She was ready to make it happen. And then she had some car repairs that needed to get done. And man, I certainly understand that. I know how that goes. Lots of, uh, lot. <laughs> the worst thing for me is when I've got to buy tires. I understand I need tires. You got to have good, safe tires on your car. But if there's one thing I don't like buying, it's tires. So I understand, Yolanda. You know what? You've got a great mule, and your mule has got a great owner. And we know that you're doing everything you can to take care of your mule, take care of yourself, and uh, and we're always here for you. Um, Steve, so let's talk a little bit about your visit to Australia. Now, I got a few, a few pictures here. Which one do you want to start with telling the folks about? 
you got a picture of uh, the the uh, horse I used to move the cattle around. It, his name was Helicopter. Ah, yeah, there we go, right there. There's the helicopter right there. Tell me about that. So I don't see the picture, so I guess... It's up there. They can see it. Uh, okay, they can see it. Okay, they call this thing a cattle bug. Notice how it's a big old glass front end. And they they literally... They can they drop down. This one bull didn't want to go where they wanted it to go. They went down and actually tapped it with one of the runners <laughs> of that helicopter. We moved almost 600 head of cattle in two and a half hours and put those all into a big steel uh, uh, corrals. And uh, I forget what was the name he called those corrals. I lost it. Maybe Dave would. Um, I don't know. I doubt, I doubt Ian's watching right now. But maybe Dave. Uh, they not a paddock. Uh, they had another name for them instead of working corrals. But these cattle are wild, wild, wild. I've never seen so many cattle be so wild. This pastor, pardon me, that we were working. Uh, they, they call it a paddock. Yeah. It's six hundred and forty square acres so that is a big section that is. and they got these cattle in there it's huge and so these cattle are wild and somebody on horseback had better know what they're doing when we're getting into this kind of a cow and you better be you better know you better have a good riding mule which ian uh, uh campbell when i was down in in uh in Rifle Creek, he, he he rode mules. But anyway, but these cattle are so wild when these helicopters, two of them together, would come around and just like cutting horses, would move these things around. So that's a that's what I rode in for about an hour working cattle, putting cattle away in this great uh, set of corrals. I showed them the yeah. I showed them the picture there of uh, of you in the helicopter. You're sporting your Andrada Ranch hat, representing Arizona, representing Andrada yeah. Ranch. I'm sure Randy appreciates seeing that. Now on your way home, uh, there was uh, there was a picture you sent me. Why don't you talk about this picture that you uh, sent me, just with no one around? Uh, airport there. Oh, at the airport. Yeah, that was LAX. And there is absolutely, as you can see, it looked like a ghost town. There was nobody there. Matter of fact, the airplane that we got on uh, in LAX and flew to Arizona, there was only about 15 people on that plane. That was us, you know. And so it was. You had your masks. You were doing your there. part. Yeah. They see me with my mask. Yeah, there. they see it right now. They're looking. Yeah. Yeah, that was. I wore a mask and gloves the majority of the time. Now, we were 14 hours from Sydney to uh, United States. And I wore a mask uh, and I wore them gloves. The, the, the whole time I tried to protect myself, but other people that was in the way, you know. Uh, do you have, uh, let's see here. Do you have the picture of Ian next to his mule? I, I know you were gonna send that one through. It did not come through. If you wanna try and send it real quick, you can. Um, and have a picture of I call it Australian cow horses. And it shows the picture of the pictures all lined up with the uh, in front of the old bunk. I don't have that one either. How about the one? What are you uh, holding out on me? All these pictures. I thought you were sending me the best ones. Here is it. Do you have this one right here? No, I don't have it. Steve's holding out on me. There we go. How about the one of the. Uh, with the bull catcher it's called outback do you see that one it sounds like you're cycling through jokes how about the one with the trucks all lined up no i haven't heard that one how about the one with the bull catcher no i haven't heard that joke either <laughs> do you have the one that says outback wow bull catchers do you see the picture no are you texting these to me yeah they haven't come through yet you know what i need to get a phone <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a picture of me with a fly mask? Folks, Steve Edwards has been holding out on me this whole time. Have you got a pic you don't have a picture of me no. with a fly mask? No. It says David Shrine. And I seen it. Look, Look here. I'll I'm show looking, you. Here it is, right? Here. I'm looking to see Here's if all the pictures. Maybe. You know. Yeah, that's me. That's 
Is that an iPhone? It says right now. Here's here's Susan mm-hmm. in her fly mask. Yeah, there she is. Two pictures. Now, now that says David, David Shrine, right? Yeah, but I think that's from I I think I know where they're going. I think I know where they're going. Hang on. Oh, this one's the best of them all. This one's the best of them all. And I'll tell you what. That you got to get this picture up. You see that? Yeah. I cannot. Hey, you see how that cow? I don't know why they're not coming in, Steve. Well, you know what we'll do? We'll get all these and we'll put them on Facebook and we'll make sure that the people can see them because uh, they're great and maybe share a few more next week. Do you see how this one is here? It looks like the cow is eating that car. Oh, yeah, now we can what see it's it. Say, yeah, it's basically saying be careful of cows on the road. And and Ian Campbell, the owner of the ranch there, now he has – it's just a small place. It's only 760 square miles. That's his main ranch. And then he has two other small ranches that are only about 250 to 300 square miles. Steve. I found them. Yeah. Oh, good. I found them. They were coming to my uh, my Google Photos account, not my text message. They're coming to my Google Photos uh-huh. account. Let me see. I'll, I'll pull I'll pull them up here. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Where's my? Can you show the one of the outback, the wild bull catchers? Yeah, right there. It's up there. Folks are. Uh, let's see. Crop to fill current application there we go okay so uh yeah the so there's okay so there okay steve okay scrolling back here there's ian standing next to his uh standing next to his mule right yeah that's right and now notice i want to tell you something folks you see him standing next to his mule that is an australian cowboy that is how he is dressed most of the time i don't think i ever saw him in levi's or a long shirt or boots the whole time at that he he dressed just like that right there and that's one of his meals that's on one of his pastures right there and, and you see the, the other mules at there. rifle creek yeah yeah and they he raises graze his own them? yeah he just raises them and and then rides them do you see the picture of all the mules with the ant ant heels around it is that what is is uh is that what those big tall brown things are yep yeah yep, those are yeah. ant heels I mean, there are ants crawling everywhere. You wake up in the morning, you got ants crawling on you. Oh man! You know? Ants in your pants. Uh, yeah. There's you. Now, there's you with your uh, with your uh, fly net. Yeah, yeah. And I tell you what, the flies are thick. You know, it's it's nothing to have 25, 30 flies on you at one time. Ooh. Yeah. Did, well, then that you net see came the in picture handy. There? You see Susan's the there. I, I see it. Susan's fly net. Um, then we've yeah. got the okay. There's the beware with the cow eating the car. We see that. Okay, and yeah. then here is the uh, the outback, the uh, wild bull catchers. Yep, and and that that is how they catch cattle there. How Those about bulls. That? You see the horns on that sucker? Oh my goodness! I seen. Yeah, I seen some slicks, which means an unbranded unbranded uh, bull or or uh, cat or bull or cow that have not had a brand and they were two and three years old like this bull here never has been caught by a man i asked ian about this one place where we were staying and uh, working his cattle he said steve i have not been to this part of my ranch in over a year he had really has wow. no idea how many cattle he's got you know <laughs> but he said i said well make a guess he says well I probably got close to maybe 10, 12,000 wow. head of cattle on wow. his ranch. And his is a small place. Now, the ranch next to his place, yeah. is uh, uh, they've got over, uh, over 20, 25,000 head of cattle on that place. And, and the ranch is almost 2,000 square miles. How about Can it? you imagine? Yeah. It's incredible. Um, I mean, those, you know. You, you, you literally can drive all day and never get off the ranch. The uh, the next one, the last one that you sent over is the uh, the trucks all lined up. So what is that right there? Well, what that is, normally you see horses, uh, like you go to Andrada, and you see horses and mules tied to the hitching post. Right. Well, that's, that's what these guys, these are all the different trucks. Toyota and, uh, and Nissan are the main trucks those guys use there. 
and they're nothing like ours, nothing like our Toyotas, nothing like our Nissans. They actually have snorkels on the side so that if it goes underwater, they can still keep on going, you know? Yeah, yeah, but very cool. Yeah, yeah I, know I was, that was sitting a in, trip. in a pickup truck, and when these cattle went through the gate, we didn't we didn't move in on them. We, we drove up to them with the air conditioning on. <laughs> it, was, it was amazing. Oh, Dave. Uh, on, let's see here. Let's make sure we get uh, – we've got one more questions from – one more question here from Jesse Smith. Let's let's get this before we uh, – before we call it a day. Hey, Steve, I got a question about taming basically a wild mule. She's been untouched other than birth, but what's the best advice uh, to get her to trust me and let me start handling her? Oh, boy. That is that is really difficult because if you, you know, the great thing about imprinting folks is you take them from a baby and they, they build trust. But, you know, like Ian, he's got a bunch of mules and, and, and this sort of thing. He can't hardly touch most of those mules. What, what he has to do, he literally puts them in a squeeze and to hold them there. You know, so what would I do with this one? Uh, number one, I would put the mule in a, uh, in a 20 by 20 stall. That would be the biggest. I'd prefer a 10 by 20 stall to start with. You feed it, you water it every day, you know. That mule has to depend upon you for feeding water. Now, I'm not saying go into the pen, but I'm saying come on the outside. And as you're walking toward the mule, if she's facing you, go ahead and put the feet in. If they're not facing you or if they go to leave, take the feet back out. That's just one example. But keep them in a small pen. And then the next thing is to have a round pen. Um, I like to have a round pen uh, close to my alleyways. And then I can move them over into the round pen, and then I can work them in there. And you don't work a mule in a round pen like you do a horse. In other words, what a lot of horsemen do, you'll see them uh, stop and step back, and the horse will turn and come to them. And everybody thinks, oh, that's great. Don't do that with the mule because they're only doing that because they figure it's an easy way for them to do it. I like to have them to where – I go toward them. Um, oh, my video, how to communicate. In the first part of that video series, uh, it shows me working in a round pen, working with a lady, helping her catch her meal. Uh, and and that's, that's very useful there. Very good. Well, that's it for this week. Folks, thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us. We had a great group of folks today. A lot of great questions coming through. Uh, really enjoy spending time with y'all today. Uh, we're going to be back here next Wednesday uh, at 3 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. That's uh, 4 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, 5 p.m. Central Daylight Time, and 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Right there, we got four time zones. Uh, ca- yeah. All accounted for. Uh, we'd yeah. love to hang out with you next week. Uh, you don't have to sign up for anything, but we do recommend that you make sure you're on Steve's list because you'll get notifications on when we're going live so you don't forget. And by golly, you do not want to forget. You want to be here. You want to be hanging out with us. And, of course, if you have any questions in the meantime, you can uh, hop on social media and ask them, or you can send a message to support at muleranch.com. We'll take care of you. Or just call Steve. His information's yep. on the website, muleranch.com. Uh, Steve, anything you want to say before we uh, close out today's show, first show of 2020? First show of 2020, it's going to be more. Well, you know, you know, in this beautiful United States of America, we have some awesome people, first responders, uh, police officers of all kinds, uh, doctors and nurses right now, they're on the front line. You mentioned that. And, folks, we have a powerful, powerful way to get to help those people and that is by prayer we must lift these first responders doctors nurses uh police officers all up in prayer on a daily basis you know you think about them you you pray for them use that tool that you have christian that that even the disciples said jesus teaches how to pray simple you don't have to go into a great big king king james prayer Pray for those first responders. That's that's really important. God bless America. Yep, absolutely. Thank you so much, everybody, for hanging out. Looking forward to see you next week. And if there's anything we can do to help you, be sure and let us know. That's why we do this. We want to help you. Steve, see you uh, same time next week. Sound good? 
Yeah, sounds good, partner. I'll be looking forward to folks sending me emails or calling me or something. I'll tell everybody. Uh, not a, it's not a it's not a secret necessarily, but I don't answer the phone, and I tell you why. <laughs> if I answered the phone every time it rang, I get between thirty and forty phone calls a lot of times just in the morning. Yeah. So I'll take him and gather up a few phones, sit down, have a cup of coffee, make a few phone calls. But don't, don't, please don't call. Expect me to answer. It won't happen. But I will always get back to you. I will always try to help you out. It's Queen Valley Mule Ranch. It's uh, it, it, if we were ta- if we were answering all those calls live, it'd be Queen Valley Call Center. And folks don't want you as a call center. They want you as a ranch. So yeah, we do everything we can to take care of uh, everyone, folks. We'll see you same time next week. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.